Hi, I'm Estelle Krengo from Wits University and this is my electric circuits lecture on star delta transformations. Before I start, I'd like to point out that this lecture is based on a very excellent section in the book by Alexander and Sadiku called Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Sometimes it's not possible to simplify a circuit by combining resistors in parallel and resistors in series. So in those cases we can sometimes use star delta transformations. On the left-hand side over here, you can see the so-called star or Y configuration. And on this side, you can see the delta configuration. What we're going to try and do when we do star delta transformations is you can see that we've identified three nodes here, node A, node B and node C and on the delta side that is the same node A, node B and node C and so in star delta transformations we see what the values of the delta resistors must be if we're trying to replace a star formation or conversely what the values of the star resistors have to be if we want to replace a delta formation. First I'm going to do the maths and then I'll show you an easy way to identify um, what the converted resistor values are. So let's look at node AC. So we are looking from this point of view. So for the star um, AC, we can see that our eye can see resistor RA in series with resistor RC. So that's equal to RA plus RC. And if we look at the same point of view for the delta network, then we can see that what we see looking into nodes A and C is we see that for the delta AC we can see R2 in parallel with R1 plus R3. So for the two networks to be equivalent we need to have R a plus RC equal to R2 in parallel with R1 plus R3. And if you use the rules for combining resistors in series and resistors in parallel, then that turns out to be R2 times R1 plus R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Using a similar process, it turns out that R A B is equal to R A plus R B in the star network, and that is equal to 
R1 in parallel with R2 plus R3 in the delta network and that is equal to R1 times R2 plus R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 and RBC is equal to RB plus RC in the star network and that is equal to R3 times R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. And now you need to do some maths with these equations. Uh, let's call them equations 1, 2, and 3. And if you do the maths with equations 1, 2, and 3, you can eliminate one of the um, star variables. And on the next page, I'll show you what that equation gives us. So the maths from the previous section gives us this result. It gives us RA in the star network is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. RB in the star network is equal to R1, R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. And Rc in the star network is equal to R2, R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. And now I'll show you the easy way to do the star delta conversion. So first let's draw that the two networks overlaid on each other. So let's make that node A and that node B and connect it between node A and node B. We have resistor R1. Let's make that node C. And we've got R2 connected between node A and node C and R3 connected between node B and node C and then in the Y network or the star network we have R, R A and R B and R C. Now if you look at the equations and you look at the drawing, then you can see that RA is equal to R1, R2, which are the two delta resistors that are adjacent to it. 
divided by the sum of all three of the delta resistors. And this holds true for all of these resistors. So you can see that Rb is equal to the product of the two adjacent delta resistors divided by the sum of all three delta resistors. And Rc is equal to the product of the two adjacent delta resistors divided by the sum of all three of the delta resistors. So in summary then, a resistor in the star network is equal to the product of both adjacent delta resistors divided by the sum of all three delta resistors. If we follow a similar maths process, then to get a star to delta conversion, it turns out that if we do the same kind of maths, R1 is equal to RA, RB plus RB, RC plus RA, RC divided by RC. R2 is equal to RA, RB plus RB, RC plus RA, RC divided by RB and R3 is equal to, unsurprisingly, RA, RB plus RB, RC plus RA, RC divided by RA. And so it turns out that if you do a star to delta conversion, a resistor in the delta network is equal to the sum of all possible star resistor pairs divided by the opposite star resistor. So if you look at R1 for example, it's the sum of all the possible star resistor pairs which is RA, RB plus RB, RC plus RA, RC divided by the opposite star resistor. So here's R1 and its opposite star resistor is RC. The same for R2, all the possible pairs of star resistors summed and its opposite star resistor is RB and R3's opposite star resistor is RA. Here's a quick example of how to apply star delta conversions. So in this circuit we're going to replace this delta network with a star network. So let's just mark it. We're going to replace this part with 
a star network. And so if we overlay the two, we'll see that it looks like this. We've got those nodes. And we've got connected some 6 ohm resistors. And the fact that they're all 6 ohms makes this calculation much easier. And now we need to work out what the, the equivalent star resistors are going to be. So those star resistors are going to sit here. And here. And here. And let's call them R1. R2 and R3. So in this case, because all the delta resistors are 6 ohms, we have R1 equals R2 equals R3. And each of them is equal to the, t the product of the two adjacent resistors, so it's 6 times 6 divided by the sum of all the delta resistors, so it's 6 plus 6 plus 6, and that's equal to 36 divided by 18, which is equal to 2 ohms. Um, and then our simplified circuit looks like this. We've still got the 20 volt source. And we've got the top 4 kilo ohm. Sorry, I see it was kilo ohm. So that has to be kilo ohm, kilo ohm. Kilo, kilo, kilo. That's still there. And then there's a 4 kilo ohm resistor there. And then we've got our star network, which looks like that. And that's 2K, 2K, and a 2K over there. And that's all connected to the source. And you can see that because these are in series now, and those two pairs are in parallel with each other, and we can simplify this circuit quite a lot. And then we can solve for the current I. And that's the end of this clip.